Dang, it finally happened. We straight killing him. He took one look, just knocked him down. Okay, here we are and we're ready to get down to work. This is about as good of a workspace as I could muster up. Being that the car is so low, I had to kind of use the little bump up on the garage entrance, coupled with a 2x4. So I can get a jack underneath this thing and uh, in the factory body mount area or lift point. And uh, just do one side at a time. So we're going to start here on the passenger side, which is the uh, actual warped side, and get that pulled off, make sure that there's no other damages, like the hub isn't warped or bent or bad bearing or anything like that, um, because driving it, I just noticed that you know it was squeaking and making a bunch of noise on this side. I hoped it was just some rust or something that was going to wear off, but after driving it around a few miles, it didn't go away, so it actually got worse. So I ordered up the new brakes, and uh, we'll go ahead and put these new uh, zinc-coated rotors to prevent rust, and got our new uh, ceramic pads and little uh, hand-forged custom isolators. Should be awesome. A little different rotor design than what was here before. You can see this one's got some extra ground out spots, you know, keeping her extra lightweight. And um, they're just got some little slots in them. This one's got slots and drills. So I'm sure we won't notice the difference, but let's just jack this thing up and get going at it. She barely fits under there, that's tight. But we are in and we will get this wheel off. All right, so let me just share with you what we've been listening to on this thing. Oh, very stiff, smooth. Hope you can hear that. And when you turn, puts a little more pressure on it and sounds even worse. Okay, let's dig in for a closer look. Oh. So the main reason I decided without even pulling this apart and checking to see if the hub might be bent or whatever is basically this side and the other side both have pretty significant uh, wear. I don't know what you'd call it, just a uh, stepped edge on it here where you can tell it's definitely worn quite a bit. I mean you can see that rusted edge there. That's how much is worn off the rotor here. So instead of screwing around I just figured get the new stuff, put it on, and we'll go ahead and pull our caliper next so we can get our rotor off and then uh, we'll go ahead and check this hub, put a straight edge on it and all that and see how it looks and worst comes to worst we'll put the new rotor on new pads and make sure everything spins nice and smooth and easy at that point um, if it's still catching then you know that the hub's messed up we got ourselves a 
21 millimeter socket to start with, six point and half inch drive ratchet and a big old long breaker bar. We're gonna see if we can uh, bust these guys loose. I wish I could get an impact on there, but there's just not enough space. So let's give this a shot. Feel like a little. Uh, uh, I bet if I turn the wheel, this would be easier. All right, I got the wheel turned. Give me better access, and I still feel like I'm a contortionist, cramped down in here. But hey, when you don't have a lift, this is the life you live. No problem. Get these big old bolts loose. Ugh. Pretty tight for the amount of miles on this thing. But I guess you got steel bolts going into aluminum. Most likely going to deal with some sort of corrosion and little battle wounds. Hey, she's loose. We're going the right way. Ah. Must have put some thread locker on this, I'm guessing, because steel feels really stiff, firm. locker on it. I just complain about how others engineer things. I don't engineer them myself. Alright, so what you want to do is grab yourself an all-purpose um, sheetrock joint compound bucket like this or some kind of zip tie, something you can hang on to the A-arm here and hold up your brake caliper so it's not going to pull on the brake hose and see that just boom perfect in most cases now this rotor would just come right off but we got a little set screw here 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 and it's uh torx so you can grab one of those and we'll pop this sucker off all right this looks like it is a t30 torx Comes right out like butter. <coughs> Slide this guy off here. And you could probably turn this thing. You know, it's got some definite issues going on. It looks like there's some heat cracks and lots of grooves in it. I just would rather get rid of it. Move on. Waste not, want not. Well, that was the old saying. So this, we're just going to set it on here for a minute, check it out, but uh, definitely got to spray it down, wipe it down with some brake clean first. That's why they make the brake clean, so you can have clean brakes. All right, how's that look? This says front passenger side. Nailed it. I didn't even notice that it had that on there, but wow. Okay, we still got a little rubbing noise on our dust shield, but sounds very consistent. So you know what that means? That means it was our rotor, not the hub. Because if it was the hub, that scraping on the dust shield would be inconsistent. Woo! Alright, nothing left to do but clean that, put the screw back in. And then we'll work on getting those brake pads swapped out. Okay, we're back. I went ahead and cleaned the back side, put our screw in. I gave a little nudge on that dust shield in the back. We're golden. Give that another little uh, rubber.
just that easy, you know? You set it and you forget it. It's gonna be great. I'm pretty confident that uh, any nine-year-old in America with the right tools and supervision could easily do this job, so you can do it too. Let's move on to this uh, caliper, see if we can get these weird brake pads with weighted top corners changed out. I've never attempted something like that, so see how that goes. Judo chop! This is what I'm talking about with these brake pads. Kind of a odd deal here, this upper weighted section. I've had a couple hundred cars, never seen that before. Learn something new every day. All right, come a little closer here. I will try not to get in the way, but we got our C clamp. It's a four inch, you know, you could probably use a 40 inch or, you know, whichever one you got, as long as it fits over. And I like to go ahead while, man, these aluminum calipers are so light. Feels like a baby rhinoceros or something. So you just take this, slide it in here when you got your old um, brake pad still in there. And I guess I want to put something on here to protect the finish uh, as to not screw it up too much. And you just want to go ahead and press the pistons back in their hole. And using the old brake pad is a great way to do that because you don't care about the old brake pad. And, uh, oh, come on. You can just go ahead and give her, give her some. Some, some of these you have to twist and turn them, the piston inside, so this type of deal ain't gonna work for you. Too easy, but as you can see here, she just dives right back into the pool. And it's that easy. You're ready for a brand new fat brake pad to get in there. So we'll just turn this around. Replicate that for the other side. Okay, we're back in here and as you can see, uh, there's a couple pins. They are rolling through the caliper. Here is the pointed end and the hard end there. Kind of going through holding this metal plate retainer. So you need to get that out. Usually on like a Toyota or something, you got little like clips that hold those in. This does not have anything, and I'm not sure what to do about that, but. I guess we're just going to give her a tappy. Let's see what happens. It seems extremely odd to me that this clip is strong enough to just hold enough tension on that pin that nobody's afraid of them coming loose, coming out, grinding into. I don't know, your wheel or something. That's wild. So, looks like we'll need some kind of a gripping device, like a vice grip or pliers to wiggle that out. We'll do that. All right, so just, I'm pushing on this tab to make it a little softer, easier, and uh, wiggling these needle nose vice grips around. And, One way or another, we'll get her done. There was obviously a bit of pressure on that thing. So it's always best to, you know, especially when you don't do this every day and you've never worked on this exact vehicle, it's good to always, you know, keep things exactly how they were and take note so you don't get lost when it time comes time to put it back together. All right. So I gotta get this other pin out. It's got a little, kind of a little spring clip <clears throat> end on it. 
that taps into place, so that's what pretty much holds it in there. Once you get past that part, my punch isn't long enough to get it out past it, so if you, if you have something small enough to get in there, a good solid punch, then go ahead and use that. Make it easier for you. All right, we've got both the pins out, and the pad should just fall right out the top now. And take a look at our difference in meat. It's quite a big, it's quite a big difference in your sandwich there, I'd say. This one looks a lot better. These are definitely past their due date. So should just slip these guys back in. Like so. And then slide our pins back in. Through the provided hole in the brake pad. Should be able to just smash these guys into place. Get that nice solid sound. No, it's seated. We can spread these apart, put our little retainer in. Just a little uh, different than the original but should do the same trick. Keep the pads in place. Uh, but it's way too long. Who invented this? It doesn't fit. What's up with that? Oh, what a disaster. I guess we gotta try and use this one, which is not gonna be easy to install. I have to pull one of these pins back out for sure. Oh, I don't think I can get it. Very difficult to bend that under. Man. What a bummer. Well, basically I'll just have to pull that pin out, push this down and slide the pin back through. Okay, I'm ready for your oohs and ahs. This thing's ready to throw back on, so let's go ahead and do that. Junk. sure your brake line is free, not all twisted and kinked. And that everything is clean, ready to go. And if you did everything right, it should just go right into place like so. Get rid of your bucket and put your bolts on. I'm just going to hold one in place and then I'm going to put some more Loctite on there, the blue stuff, just so we don't have any issues. Perfect. Perfect in schlag. Alright, turns out I only had some red thread lockers, so I'll just put a little, one little dab on there. And just like Burl Cream, a little dab will do ya. <sighs> Alright, now that we got those torqued to spec with our torque wrench here, we will go ahead and 
slap our wheel back on. And it's pretty much easy as that. It's a done deal. Ready to hit the streets and style this time without making all kinds of weird noises. And you've got old ladies and children staring at you funny. That's never fun. Unless you're into that sort of thing. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and do the other side and trust that it's exactly the same. And I hope that uh, you found this informational and informative. I think those are the same thing, but... Oh. it. Transformation's over. We got some stylish new brakes up front. That's just the pads because they're not seated yet. Once we hit the brakes, that'll square everything up. We'll be good to go. See, we had great success and uh, the brakes work awesome now nice and quiet and smooth just the way they were intended to be uh, if you enjoyed this video please give me a like and share and subscribe We've got lots more good stuff coming all the time thank you oh god